Hi, Tim Unkert here. In this video, I'm going to show you how to run C programs on your Chromebook using a simple GUI text editor called gedit. Okay, the first thing that you want to do is you want to go down here, go to your settings, go to advanced, go to developers. You'll see right at the top, it says Linux development environment. Now this applies to Chromebooks 2019 and after that have AMD chips. Let me just get that out of the way. Um, if you don't have that, this may not work. Okay, but assuming you have that, what you're gonna do is there's gonna be a button here. I have mine on already, but it's going to say turn on if you haven't turned it on. You're gonna click turn on. It will give you some suggestions about the size of the disk space you wanna use for Linux. Uh, and you can resize that if you want, okay? So you're gonna go through and install that. The next thing that'll come up is this terminal. And it'll probably be smaller like this, and the font may be smaller. To change that, what you can do is you can go to settings and go down here and change the font size. Okay, so you right click on this little icon, okay? So now I'm gonna maximize this and what you're going to want to install are a couple things. First thing is you're gonna type sudo apt, uh, apt install build dash essential. Okay, and I've already installed it. So it's a zero upgraded, zero newly installed, zero to remove and zero not upgraded because it's already installed. The next thing you wanna, but for you, it will go ahead and install and it'll say, do you want to take this amount of disk space provided that you have it and you want to, you'll say yes, and then it'll install. The next thing you want to install is gedit. So I'll type sudo apt install gedit, then a space. And I also want to install some of the extra plugins. So gedit dash plugins. Now you'll notice if you just install gedit, it will have some plugins, but it won't have all the ones we need. So we do want to go ahead and install that. And so you're going to go ahead and install it. Again, I've already installed it. So as you can see, it's a zero upgraded, zero newly installed, zero to remove, and zero not upgrade because I've installed it. Okay, so now I'm going to exit out of my terminal. And you'll see, uh, this is actually the icon for gedit here. You'll see that I already have it pinned. But if you don't have it pinned, what you're going to do is you're going to go here and you're going to see something that says text editor. It may be down here in your Linux apps, uh, but just look for that. It's just this blank thing. It says text editor. That is gedit. Okay. You're then going to open gedit and you can pin it to the bottom bar here by just right clicking. You'll see it gives me the option to unpin, but since I, since I pinned it already, if you have not pinned it, just click pin. Okay. So when it opens, it's pretty plane here. It has a little status bar down here. Uh, it tells you the tab width and then this button to open files. What you want to do now is, let me move this over here. You want to go to um, your preferences in this little menu up here. And then you're going to go to plugins and you're going to go scroll down till you find embedded terminal. Click on that and external tools. Click on that. Also make sure that file browser panel is checked, okay? You're then going to exit out of this and then go back up to this menu and go down to view. Click on that and you wanna check the side panel and the bottom panel, okay? And I can use the mouse to drag this up a little bit, make this a little bit larger. Move this over here for now. Okay, the other thing you may want to do is go to preferences and go to editor, uh, no, go to font and spaces, font and colors, and you'll see it says use a system font, which is set at size 10. You may want to increase that. Uh, I'm going to click off of that. I've already previously set this at monospace regular 18 instead of cuisine 10. So you can pick what type of font you want and the size as well. Now, the Regular 18 is pretty big, but I'm going to use that for this video. Okay, so over here, uh, I've created some files. Let's go through that again, though. So I'm going to go to Home, 
and then to I installed it under the username tunker. And you see I've created a folder fo called C. But let's say I didn't have that folder. In fact, let's just delete it. Okay. So we're going to delete that folder, maybe. Uh, move it to trash. Yeah, there we go. Okay. And so now I'm going to create a new folder. Let's call that folder C. Uh, do it. No. New folder. Let's try that again. C. There we go. I must have hit the wrong button. All right. So now I'm going to go into that folder. It's empty. I'm going to create a new file. And you can call this whatever you want, but for uh, the purposes of following along with this make file, uh, you can call it main.c. And I'm going to make that file. And I right click new file. And I'm going to create a make file. And the M has to be capitalized. Uh, on that. Okay, so now I'm going to go to the make file and let me just make sure I'm on there. And what I'm going to say is all, then go over here, then gcc main.c dash o for output and then main. And I'm going to hit control s to save and it's going to highlight that for me. Okay, so that's going to be my make file. Now I'm going to go back to my main.c file. Let me close my make file and I'm going to create a simple C program. Uh, so I'll, I'll include standard uh, input output header. Uh, and you see that the syntax highlighting, it changes color there. So it's giving me some syntax highlighting, which is nice. And then the standard library header. Um, and then I'm going to include a main function and we'll return zero. And then I'll close out the function. And then in this function, let's just print f, uh, hello, how are you, question mark. Okay, and close that with semicolon. And okay, so our program is going to say, hello, how are you in C? Okay, so now what I want to do is go back to here and manage external tools. And where it's built, you'll see I've mapped it to control B. Now to do that, you just click on it and type control B. And that's kind of easy. You can do whatever you want, uh, so long as it doesn't conflict with another keyboard shortcut, but I'm just going to do control B. Okay. All right. So now I'm on this file. I'm going to hit, uh, I'm actually going to close this out because it, if you just done that, you're going to need to close it and then restart it. At least I did. Okay. So I'm going to open back my main.c file and now I'm going to hit control B and you'll see it builds it down here. Okay, so the tool output, it has, um, so let's run that command, gcc main.c with the output main, and uh, it is done. Okay, so now I'm going to go here and change into my C directory. You want to be in the same directory. Okay, and then I can list out the files, and you'll see I have that main file. So I just put uh, dot, uh, dot backslash main to run it. And it says, hello, how are you? Now you'll see that this uh, is on the same line. If I want to change that, I can just do a backslash N to create a new line. Let's save it. Let's build it. So we rebuild it. And then now let's clear this and rerun it. And you'll see it's on its own line. So that's how to run a C program in Gedit. Uh, thank you for watching. If you like videos like this, please like and subscribe as it really helps the channel grow and stay tuned for more videos like this. Thanks.